All right, I want to start this off by saying that I'm Tesla's biggest fan. I have been, I was forever emotionally. I love Tesla, I love Elon Musk. They're changing the world in a positive way. I can't think of anything better than the planet, than moving us to electri electronic, sustainable transport, having solar panels on the roof, everybody charging their cars. That's what we need. But you gotta make money if you're a company. That's where I just am losing it. We've got this Solar City acquisition. We got the Model 3. We got the Master Plan Part D. All this hype's on Tesla. I've been following the company for five years now. I've written about it since 2012. Links. I feel like I gotta speak out. They've got all these ambitions. Sure, the Model 3. They had lines around the block. It was like the iPhone of cars. 300,000 pre-orders. All great. Let's face it. Elon's awesome, but he doesn't really ever hit his targets. Model X. Unveiled, gonna launch, deliveries, late 2014, didn't happen. Came out in late 2015, all right, sure, I'll give you a year. But that was supposed to be volume. Volume production, eh, debatable if we've even seen that yet, and we're halfway through 2016. The other thing is, if you read the Tesla Motors forums, it looks like they were pushing out deliveries to meet quarterly estimates, which is super un-Tesla-like, and as a potential future Model X buyer, kind of makes me skeptical, because I don't want to come to buy a car that's going to have defects because the company tried to push it out to make this quarterly earnings estimates. And let's face it, Elon, you don't give a shit about Wall Street. Why are you trying to meet their quarterly estimates? Build a company. Your customers are where the value's at, not pleasing the bankers. I don't get that. That's beside the point. He misses his targets. The Model S was supposed to have a 30% gross margin target, and so was the Model X. And this would this is would be by far the highest in the auto industry, and was the reason that I originally got excited and compared the business model to Apple, because they have a lot of similar characteristics, higher gross margins. It's not materializing. So that's what that's why I kind of get this holdup of like, okay, well you're focusing on all these things in the pa in the future that are gonna happen, that are gonna make you so much money, but then you put aside the promises about making money on the products you're currently producing. And so if you can't make money on the Model S and you can't make money on the Model X, why are you releasing cheaper versions and why are you trying to sell more and why are you trying to make all these other cars? Let's focus on what you're doing and start to see a profit maybe and maybe hit some of these goals. The 80 to 90,000 deliveries this year, eh, and they've only delivered 29,000 cars in the first six months of the year. They're gonna have to deliver 51,000 in the next six months to make the lowest end of their estimate. And yet they're sticking by it because a la Tesla classic fashion, they're not gonna abandon that until they really, really have to. I mean, I don't know, this is just my gut instinct, but I feel like every time Elon's on the calls making all these lofty projections, I can see the look on his engineer's faces and they're all just like, oh sh Advice to Tesla IR, do not issue delivery guidance. You guys are shooting yourselves in the foot. We're gonna deliver 50 to 50,000 Model, Model X cars. That's what they said last year, then they come in at like, slightly below that everyone's pissed even though they like had an incredible growth year over year and if you look at it objectively and if you didn't have that guidance in mind you would have said wow they killed it they're going like crazy no other auto company is going like this you would have just looked at the raw numbers there's no upside to me because their their guidance is so lofty that there's no way they're ever going to beat it even if they hit it then everyone's like okay you hit the guidance that you said you were going to hit who cares you said you were going to do that we're not impressed you didn't beat it we're pissed and if you miss it, then it looks really bad because then it's like, oh, you said you were gonna do this and now you're not, something's gotta be wrong with the business. So you're creating this whole investor psyche that is incredibly unhealthy and I don't like it at all. Don't issue guidance. What's the point of issuing guidance? It, it, it just doesn't seem to be productive. I don't know if you read the Tesla forums, but the amount of Model X customers who've had issues with their vehicles is astounding to me. As a Tesla, as a future Tesla customer, this worries me. And as a Tesla shareholder, as a past Tesla shareholder, that really worried me because I'm going to be the generation that carries Tesla. I need to buy a Tesla. And instead of being that company, yeah, I loved the Tesla that took six extra months with their Model S because they wanted to make it perfect for me and they didn't give a shit about what Wall Street thinks. I love that Tesla. I hate the Tesla that's like, oh, we're going to give you your brand new car that you waited three more years than you said you were going to wait that cost 150 grand. It's going to have all these problems. That you're going to have to go right back to the dealer doesn't make me want to buy their car, definitely does not want to make me sign up to be the first one to receive their Model 3. Sure, they're claiming that's going to be super easy to produce, but once again, that's a far-fetched future prediction that Elon has a history of not meeting. I don't know. I'm not digging it. There's this whole autonomous driving thing, master plan part do. There's a whole big thing about autonomous driving, get paid while your Tesla drives people around. Sounds sweet. Sounds like an incredible utopia if he gets this to work and no one self-driving technology to make this happen while Tesla does, it's gonna be huge. Don't get me wrong, it's gonna change the world in a great way. But I'm like thinking about this, all right, so if we're only using 5% of our cars right now 
and then we go to using 90, them 90% 90 of the time, that's an 18x utilization rate, which means the demand for new cars should go down 18x, which means the end market for all of Tesla's products shrinks by a, a factor of 18. Look, Buffett would hate this. Their share count has been rising like crazy. They're not managing their share count accurately, and I don't think they will. They haven't shown to get, they're kind of fueled by this negative interest rate boom. Sure, the stock market's soaring, we're at all time highs, debt is cheaper than ever, and they're loading up and raising money all sorts of places, and that's what's fueling their business model. I don't wanna invest in a business model that's relying on 0% interest rates. If Tesla needs to raise capital and their stock price isn't as high, and they need to do an equity raise, they're gonna dilute significantly more. The third thing is, who's gonna wanna give them debt at such a low rate if they look distressed? No one. The bottom line is this business is super reliant on capital and they're all leveraged to their share price. Employee options are all leveraged to the share price. The stock price has been 200, 250 for the past three years. If you've joined Tesla in the past three years, which more than half their employees has, you're gonna be underwater if this stock goes down 20%. So there's a huge leverage to the share price. I don't like that at all. A, because they need to raise capital with it. B, because all their employees are incentivized by it. And I understand that the auto industry is super intensive from a capital perspective. With low gross margins, they need to build factories. Like they're gonna need to raise capital. But that's also why I'm like, hmm, adding on a solar company that also is like that business model is just, I don't even think they have a plan to make money at this point. It's all about risk reward. If Tesla kills it, could they be a trillion dollar company? Easily. The, the battery business, the car business, if there is, and if Solar City works out, if they're as big as Elon says it is, trillion dollar company, maybe you get some dilution, let's call it a 50 billion diluted share count now, that's a 20 bagger. Okay, but what's the risk that this goes, what happens if there's a recession? I guarantee you luxury car sales will go down. Tesla already commands the luxury sedan market and they're not making money on it. The bottom line is if their sales goes down, they're not gonna be able to reduce their operating costs quickly at all. They're gonna be burning way more money. They're gonna be a desperate situation to raise cash, easily see a snowball into bankruptcy if a recession hits. I don't wanna take that risk. And I think Elon is putting that on in jeopardy because of the Solar City acquisition. That is cementing the fact that if a recession happens, we will be screwed. Not to mention the fact that the Solar City business model is reliant on 0% interest rates. The whole concept of borrowing money for 30 years at 0% interest to put a solar panel on your house for free sounds great until interest rates go up to 1% and that 1% margin gets squeezed and your business model doesn't work anymore. The Fed's trying to raise rates right now. Maybe they won't, maybe they'll back down, we'll have negative rates and the solar city business model will look genius. But the bottom line is if the Fed raises rates like they said they're going to, that's directly gonna impact the cost of capital, the solar city business, and a couple bips on that is could screw over their profitability margins. It all freaks me out. Here's one thing I will say for the bull case. The snowball is rolling. Tesla has more employees than ever, better technology than ever, more experience than ever, more patents, that probably doesn't matter. But the bottom line is the momentum, the idea, the vision, Elon, they're all bigger, better, and more powerful than ever. So that's what they have going for them. I really think they have by far the best technology in the auto market. And if you think a big auto company is gonna come out with the same technology that's better than theirs because they've been around longer, I think you're fooling yourself. All these companies have built their entire business model around the internal combustion engine, which is an entirely different piece of technology than the electric drivetrain. Tesla has an incredible advantage. They pioneered this technology. Why do you think they're the only electric car that can go 200 plus miles on a charge? No one else can get close to that be at, at the same price point. Tesla has way better technology. Elon is a visionary. He's a genius. He's already changed the world. Betting against him sounds like the dumbest thing you could do. So, I mean, that I sold my Tesla stock. Would I short it? Not a chance in it. I, I couldn't sleep at night betting against Elon, the guy who's staying awake all night. How do you sleep at night betting against the guy who you know is staying up all night? I'm not gonna take that. They're the disruptor. A company is, 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 is really just people at the end of the day. Tesla has by far the smartest people in the auto industry, maybe even the world, working for their company. The charisma of Elon and the vision of the company and the mission of the company is gonna continue to attract people like that and continue to build this snowball. The only question is, can they get the business model ironed out and be profitable before some whoops global economy crash happens and their sales go down? Solar City? He wants to buy Solar City. Or Tesla was on the cusp of profitability. They're, they told you you're gonna get the cash flow positive by Q4. This is a huge deal. Being profitable, being able to reinvest in their own operations as an investor, this is a huge milestone for the company. This makes them super independent. They don't have to rely on the capital markets. They don't have to rely on their stock price to raise capital. They can do it all on their own. Solar City is about as unprofitable as a business as you've ever seen. I don't know if you've looked at their gap income statements, it's a nightmare. Maybe I'm totally wrong and I'm not reading them correctly, but hear me out on these Solar City financials. 
Operating income in 2012, negative 91 million. 2013, negative 150 million. 2014, negative 335 million. 2015, negative 648 million. 2016, Q1, negative 213 million. Hey, we may hit a billion in an operating loss this year. Maybe GAAP is just the utterly wrong way to report SolarCity's financials, but the bottom line is their non-GAAP things are so confusing, I can't figure out what the hell's going on, so I just stick to GAAP, because that's what I know. Maybe they are profitable, non-GAAP, whatever, but hear me out. Here's another stat that kind of looks interesting to me. If you look at Solar City's debt load, has gone from 300 million at the end of 2012 to 600 million at the end of 2013 to 1.5 billion at the end of 2014 to 2.9 billion at the end of 2015. So they're like, oh, we're stealing Solar City, we're buying it for two or three billion. Yeah, you're paying two or three billion and you're also tacking on another 3.2 billion in debt. Yeah, 2.8 was the end of 2015, but they've added another 400 million in debt in Q1. So they're adding debt at a rate of 400 million per quarter. That, that that seems like absurd. More than doubled your debt load. Now, instead of a, having a company that was on the cusp of profitability, I have a company that's on the cusp of issuing a shitload more debt and not being profitable for years and years and years. Yeah, I'm not hyped about that. And as a Tesla shareholder, I'm pissed. I think this is a disastrous move. And the bottom line is, if you look at the yield on the Solar City bonds when they announced this deal, the market was t was pricing in a 20 to 30% chance of bankruptcy for this company. This is a financially distressed company. Imagine if Solar City went under. What would have that done to Elon's credibility, to his reputation? It would have been a huge hit. So there's also the theory that maybe he's just buying Solar City to save face. And look, I'm a huge fan of his master plans and everything and the integration, but the bottom line is Tesla and Solar City already had a partnership. Everything he's saying, he was already the chairman of Solar City. It wasn't like they weren't integrated already. It wasn't like the products weren't being offered together already. Yeah, I guess maybe they're branded a little more similarly now, but synergies, eh, I'm not seeing it. So what's the car business worth? They got Model S, they got Model X, Model 3 is coming out, according to Master Plan Part 2. We got a pickup truck in the works, some other big truck. The Model S, Model X, Model 3, are uh, the, these two are out, the Model 3 is coming out. That's what I'm valuing on right now. So the Model S has already penetrated and is the leading top selling sedan in its category in the US. I don't think they can sell that many more cars. It's not like they're taking more sales away from Mercedes. There just would need to be a lot more rich people in the world to buy that many more Model S's. And at the end of the day, you have to be kind of crazy to think there isn't going to be some cannibalization. The Model 3 was a great way to build hype. They got $300,000 pre-orders. But if I was in line and I was thinking about buying a Model S for 70 grand, and then they told me that two years later, I could buy a car with pretty much the same performance for half that price, I'd be waiting. So in the near term, I could see that as hurting sales and, and a little bit of cannibalization as people wait for the next Model 3 to come out. Let's look at the numbers. They're doing about $4.2 billion in gap revenue last year. They did one billion in automotive sales in Q1 in gap revenue. That's actually down from Q4 when they did 1.1 billion. So I'm not seeing this growth. They're only doing a billion in revenue. That's up from 900,000 year over year. The growth isn't as crazy as I want it to be. So it's hard for me to value this like an epic growth stock. Everyone says Tesla is selling a computer on wheels. It's a tech company, it's software. The bottom line is they're selling cars. So when I want to value the auto business, I'm looking at the price sales ratio of other auto companies. GM, Ford, Toyota, all have price sales ratios under one. And I understand that their business model may be slightly different. They're still, they're not selling the cars in the same way. They're using a little bit of different technology. They're much bigger, they're legacy players. This has one of the lowest price sales multiples of any industry for a reason. It's incredibly capital intensive. The margins are super thin. And when you add in the SGNA, it's just not that profitable business. And when a recession hits, it's a super vulnerable business. That's why we're seeing all these car companies go bankrupt and in the last recession. That's why when I look at Tesla and I say, okay, maybe they can do 7 billion in gap revenue this year. Okay, that's four and a half times sales. So they're still trading at such a high premium to the price sales multiple of the auto industry that it's hard for me to justify unless they really can deliver this incredibly exponential growth. So. To me, Tesla at 35, 40 billion with including the future dilution that is most likely to occur, especially if they buy Solar City, you're buying, you're already paying for half a million Model 3 orders per year. That's already priced in. You, you know, maybe you want to value Tesla at two times sales because of their model, because of their higher gross margins, because of their growth, because of their brand. Okay, so then the auto business, if it does 15 million, 15 billion in sales, then it's worth 30 billion. To just assume and value it that we're gonna do double what we're doing now in sales, Tesla is almost priced for perfection, especially in the auto industry, and especially if you take into account how low the price sales multiples typically are. Talk about the battery business. Tesla's battery business and is lumped in with their service and other revenue on their income statement, did 125 million in Q1. 
that goes along with the sales of powertrains, pre-sales vehicles, and then these power packs, their battery business. Everyone's like, oh, this battery business could be huge. Could it be justify the value of the company alone? Maybe, but I'm not really buying it because if you look at in their Q1 letter, they sold 2,500 power walls in Q1 and 100 power packs. How much revenue is it that? I don't know, but it's probably a small fraction of that 125 million. Screw it. Let's assume they're doing 100 million in battery sales already per quarter in Q1, 400 million a year. Even if they 10 bagger this number and they're selling 4 billion per year at a 30% gross margin, let's give them. That's 1.2 billion in gross profit at a 30% margin, 4 billion in revenue, 10 bagger of where they're at today. Even if they only need a third of that in SG&A and they're putting out 800 million directly to the bottom line from this battery business, if it 10 baggers, I feel like these are really optimistic projections. The company's worth 35 billion by dilution will be worth 40 billion. 800 million earnings is great, but it's not a game changer. And that's assuming a 10 bagger. So to say that there's huge upside based on the battery case as well, sure maybe way down the road, crunch the numbers and look at it. And it's really hard to get to a point where this has enough of a profitable impact to really improve Tesla's earnings structure that make the stock look absurdly cheap. Look, kills me not to own Tesla. As an investor, I want to invest in stuff I believe in and stuff that I want to see happen in the world. And that's why I was originally drawn to Tesla. And that's why I was originally an investor in the company. They were changing the world for the better. It was the future I wanted to see and I wanted to be a part of it. And that's why I wanted to be a shareholder. And I was a proud shareholder. And I told everybody I knew I was a shareholder. And I'm still going to be a diehard Tesla fan. And I'm still hope to buy a Tesla one day. That's all emotion. I'm not an emotional investor. The risk reward at these levels it just doesn't matter up to me as a 35 billion dollar company or so i don't i can't justify buying a, a, a business that's doing five billion in gap revenue that's super unprofitable and it just looks so financially unstable elon's great but he can be a little bit of a loose cannon sometimes the solar city acquisition came so far out of the blue and looks so irrational and is so hard to wrap my head around how that makes sense and how it's good for tesla that it looks like something's going on or something's going wrong. I don't know. The risk reward just isn't there for me anymore. And it kills me not to own Tesla because this company is changing the world and I can easily see them being a trillion dollar company in the future. For the planet's sake, I hope they get there. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to be a shareholder for now. And Elon, I wish you the best of luck, but I'm out.